Hi, my name is Matt Belton. I'm Jason Hess. And I'm Brady Bryant. We are Delta Interactive Education. And our goal is to create a Rube Goldberg machine that will be used in classrooms that will give students a unique, hands-on learning experience unlike any learning platform on the market today. So in this presentation, we'll be discussing the steps we took to complete design phase one. We'll be talking about our project management and planning strategies, how we found our customer needs, how we translated those into target specifications, and our competitive benchmarking information to give us a little bit of background on the market and our economic strategy moving forward. So a little bit about the project planning. Our product, like Matt said, is an educational Rube Goldberg machine that reinforces high school it's curricular topics such as math, physics, and computer science. It's a derivative product of other existing platforms that, in that it's similar to products used in high school physics labs and experiments, but it's more user controlled and user interactive. Our benefit proposition is that it will illustrate difficult concepts through an entertaining, motivating, and hands-on approach to learning. Some of our key business goals are to create a market for products based on interactive learning, succeed where traditional textbook and lecture learnings fail, and also to have the product finished by December 1st. Some of the assumptions we made about this project were that it has to be using Arduino software, it has to demonstrate educational topics, and it has to be built on top of a 24 by 24 by 3 16 inch pegboard. Our primary market is high school teachers and they will be using this in classrooms and labs uh, for educational purposes. Now our secondary markets are students, interactive science museums, and daycare facilities and they are probably not going to be using this as much as high school teachers that's why we delegated them as the secondary markets. Some of our competitive strategies include cost leadership and customer focus. So since we have a pretty small and focused primary market we focused on our customers and we possibly even could build specific parts tailored to our customers own requests and input. So to manage this project a little bit more closely we created a Gantt chart and this we listed several tasks that we needed to complete and we set them in order right here on the left side here. We also listed their duration, their starting and completion dates and here you can see the task orders, which you can see are sequential and parallel. We did this so that we as a design team didn't have too much on our plate at once. We could really divert and focus our creative attention and energy on one or two tasks at once so we could really make this product the best that it can be. So our next step was to find our customer needs. To do this, we conducted six customer interviews about competing products. Some of these products included Microsoft PowerPoint and other physics Rube Goldberg machines used in experiments. So we used what they said about these competing products. We could find out how they used them, what they liked about them, and what they didn't like about them, and any suggestions that could help improve the product. From this raw data, we were able to sort these needs into a hierarchy of primary and secondary needs, which you'll see on the next slide. So as you can see, we have each need denoted with a P or an S. P stands for primary. These are the most general needs that apply to many products across many markets. Some of these include is that the product has to be inexpensive, has to be portable, and it has to be user friendly. Some of the secondary needs are more detailed and apply more just to this product. Some of those included that it needs to be able to be seen from an entire classroom because it's going to be used in a classroom setting. It also has to come with multiple interchangeable parts to add variability to the experiments performed. From the list of customer needs that were collected, we identified 10 specifications that we listed out into a large QFD, and these different specifications are, have different correlations to the customer needs. And we gave these specifications a number value on 1 to 5, and 5 having the highest correlation to the customer needs. And from this, we figured out what specifications uh, are successful in completing the project and how how successful they are meeting the customer needs. While there are no same products on the market that are competitive with ours, there are very similar products and that's what we did here. We compared similar products to our product. We have the Chaos Tower and we have 
Visual Scientific's inclined plane and car, in which we compared to our Battlefrog Rube Goldberg machine. And our metrics seen here in this table were derived from specifications and everything found from the customer needs section. Some of the few metrics that are very similar between each product are size, the overall length and weight, target age group, which targeted mostly teenagers, and topics demonstrated. Other metrics included price, whether or not the dimensions were provided, and whether or not each product had interchangeable parts. And this benchmarking table shows a good reference point in comparison to other products on the market compared to our product that is in development currently. After the, we received the benchmarking results, we assigned values to all of our metrics. And what this did is it allowed us to calculate what, what metrics are very important and what metrics uh, have the largest priority. And from our calculations, we figured out that the most important is having the uh, high total number of available stations. And what this means is that we will be able to have three stations on one of our products at one time. And the problem happens when you want to teach multiple subjects uh, right after each other, or even at one time. So if you have more than uh, one set of different stations, what we can do is we can design these stations that teach a lot of different subjects. So one station can be a physics station, the next can be a chemistry, and the next can be a math station. And what this does is, is that it allows the customers, the teachers, to teach a wide variety of students without having to worry about um, a lot of different machines where we can just uh, supply our customers with whatever they need through one company. We also figured out which, um, which metric has the highest priority and we figured out that this is having a low market price. We want to create a product that is, in, that is within $90 and $120 while keeping our product as competitive in the market as possible. We're going to do this by lowering our manufacturing cost by using um, cheaper materials and uh, trying to keep our project on time, which will save us money. So for our economic strategy, we chose to use a scenario one approach instead of a scenario two. We decided not to use a scenario two because we decided it was too risky to shoot for selling in between X and Y units to make a profit. So we'd rather just have one point where we can break and make profit. We don't want to sell too little and make no profit or sell too many and make no profit. So we decided to keep things simple with a fixed sales price of $100 per unit and we determined our break even point to be at about 160 units sold. So to wrap up our design phase one, we established our target markets, primary being high school teachers, secondary being high school students, interactive science museums, and other things of that nature. We also developed some competitive strategies and we developed a Gantt chart to help us keep organized with our schedule and keep everything uh, on track and in time. <clears throat> our customer interviews that we conducted was, were used to develop specifications for our product and those specifications were used to derive uh, metrics for the benchmarking to compare similar products that are on the market currently. We also did an economic analysis uh, and chose to use a scenario one method with a fixed price of $100. We found that the break-even point was at 160 units. Delta Interactive Education hopes to develop a new product for interactive STEM education. Thank you.